Please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. When you are speaking, councillors are encouraged to put their video on. If you would like to speak, please type in RTS, that is request to speak, in the instant message conversation panel on the left hand side of your screen and click the arrow button to send. Please note that this panel is visible to all parties. If you would like to raise a point of order, please type PO point of order in the instant message conversation panel. Where there appears to be a consensus in the meeting for the motion, I will ask if there is any dissension from the motion. If you wish to vote against the motion, please type against in the instant message conversation panel. Otherwise, the motion will be agreed without a vote. When a formal vote is required, this will be carried out by roll call asking for a response of for or against or abstain from each councillor. A recorded vote requires support from a quarter of the members present. If a request for a recorded vote is made, unless I have already received notification of the request and 25% of the meeting have already intimated that they are in support, a roll call will be taken up to the point that a quarter of councillors present at the meeting support that request. If my connection is lost during the meeting, the vice chairman will take the chair until my connection uh, resumes. And finally, Please ensure background noise is kept to a minimum as far as possible and that mobile phones and other devices are switched to silent for the duration of the meeting. Thank you. Agenda item one. Uh, apologies for absent. Uh, to date, we have received no apologies for this evening's meeting. Agenda item two, declarations of interest. Chief, Chief Executive, can you report on any declarations of interest received, please? Thank you, Chairman. No, we've received no declarations of interest. Thank you. Agenda item three, public issues. In accordance with the Constitution, a public question has been received and published on the website and a link circulated to all members. The question is from Kate Salter, on the election of the leader of the council. A response to the question was not available before the meeting in accordance with the constitution. I shall therefore invite the acting leader, Councillor Mark Howell, to respond to the question. Councillor Howell, please. Thank you, uh, Chair. Just like to clarify that the constitution does leave it open for the question to be uh, answered actually in the meeting, which I am about to do so now. Um, I have taken the, the question is quite long uh, in parts. So I've taken the liberty of numbering those parts so that people who are listening are better able to understand it. So I'll just read the question first. Considering one, the petition supporting Councillor Vicky Slade has 1,794 signatures. Two, a support for the Unity Alliance petition was created but could not be submitted in line with constitutional procedures due to the extraordinary general meeting being scheduled imminently. Three, the Conservatives only had 28% of the votes in the 2019 local elections and four, they cited road closures as a major factor in the vote of no confidence, despite positive changes to active travel already being witnessed where, there's, where these have been implemented. Could a cross-party cabinet be formed, giving a true representation of all the, B all the BCP community's political preferences? I'm now going to answer the question. Following the elections in May 2019, two balanced groupings emerged within the Council, the Conservatives and the Unity Alliance. As minority groupings, neither has a democratic mandate to govern although many would view the Unity Alliance as having greater authority by virtue of the weight of its collective votes in the elections. A cross-party Unity Alliance cabinet has been in place for the last 16 months, including members of the following groups, Lib Dems, Christchurch Independents, Pool People and All, Bournemouth Independent and Green and Labour. Each of these groups committed to work together, but without the imposition of a whip. The Unity Alliance governs with the support of unaligned members, but the death of two 
Unity Alliance members and disagreements over policy with unaligned members weakened it to the point where its leader lost the vote, vote of no confidence last month. The current political makeup of the Council, the COVID-19 crisis and the consequences of the Council merger in 2019 now demand a more collaborative approach across the Chamber. Working collectively across groups can be challenging, especially when you take on the responsibility of governing through Cabinet. It requires listening, respectful consideration and compromise. Unfortunately, the approach of some members has resulted in a lack of trust between the groupings. Although some informal discussions have taken place between their leaders, a shared Cabinet would not currently hold the confidence of either grouping. Negotiating the pandemic and transforming the Council are clearly key objectives in respect of which councillors should be able to find common ground. However, there should be many other areas of agreement in relation to strengthening our local economy, regenerating our town centres, tackling climate change and, and the loss of biodiversity, providing opportunities for our young people and supporting our vulnerable residents. We live in a wonderful place, but we need to make it better, particularly for those who are struggling on low incomes with high housing costs. Indeed, the corporate strategy adopted by this council already seeks as its priority to deliver vibrant communities, sustainability, well-being and investment. Challenge and scrutiny are important aspects of governance, but they can be carried out within a collaborative framework and indeed are less likely to descend into point scoring and abusive comments when an atmosphere of goodwill exists. To conclude, I thank Ms Salter for her question. I have been approached frequently over the last month by residents who do not understand why politicians seem unable to find a way to work together for the, co for the common good. We were each elected by a subset of voters, but we owe a responsibility to all our residents. I therefore request that the candidates tonight embrace the principle of collective decision making and put forward some innovative solutions to achieve it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Uh, statements. Uh, in accordance with the Constitution, a statement has been received from uh, Mr Michael French on the election of the Leader of the Council and the Cabinet arrangements. The statement has been published on the website and a link circulated to all councillors. Uh, petitions. There have been no petitions uh, submitted to the Council uh, for this evening's meeting. Moving on then to uh, Agenda Item 4 election of the leader of the council. Uh, I seek nominations and I would uh, ask members to type in the uh, conversation panel any nom nominations and uh, I will take their, those nominations then as they appear on the conversation panel. Thank you members. Thank you, members. Uh, we have two uh, nominations. Uh, firstly, Councillor Leslie Dedman, who is nominating Vicky Slade. Can I can I call upon uh, Councillor Dedman to uh, make yes, a proposal, th please? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I would like to propose Councillor Vicky Slade for the leader of the BCP. Um, council. Mr Chairman, who's seconding, please? Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr Chairman, I did hear something. Yes. Um, uh, sorry, Councillor Dedman. Do, yeah. do, we, do we have a seconder for your yes, proposal? We, we do have a seconder, Chairman. Um, uh, I think that uh, was Councillor Butt. Yeah, uh, nothing's popped up on the... Uh, well, it has the on my screen. It's seconding uh, Councillor Vicky Slade's proposed by myself and seconded by Councillor Kieran Wilson. OK, thank you. And then I see that Councillor Butt, who also spoke, <laughs> has also popped up on the sidebar. So I think we're all popping up at random. Okay. Uh, Chairman, I don't know if I'm allowed to speak first or uh, whether you want to um, to run the meeting differently. 
No, uh, as I said, uh, your your nomination popped up yep. first, so I'm going to right. take them as they pop up on the conversation panel. Right. So I would like you to uh, uh, propose, uh, make your proposal. I right. will then call upon uh, uh, Councillor Wilson uh, to second. Yeah. And and then I will then call upon the nominee to uh, to make their representation. I will then call upon uh, Councillor Broadhead, who has. Uh, proposed <clears throat> Councillor Mellor and I think it's uh, Councillor uh, Judy Butt uh, who's seconded and then I will call on uh, uh, Councillor Mellor to uh, address the the, uh, the council. So yes, please please go ahead uh, Councillor Dedman. Uh, right, thank you Chairman. Well, um, I've asked myself the question, what is a good leader? I've served under some good leaders in my time in local government and some bad ones, and the good ones all had the same qualities. Um, passion, energy, the ability to inspire, empathy, commitment, communication and visibility, delegation, empowerment, accountability, loyalty. Councillor Slade, Vicky, has all these quali qualities in abundance. And of course, there's one quality uh, above all, which was head that list, and the hallmark of all good leadership and that's integrity. As Eisenhower said, the supreme quality for leadership is unquestionably, unquestionably integrity. Without it, no real success is possible. Integrity is the hallmark of Vicar's leadership, as it should be, of course, for all of us councillors in all our work as civic leaders. Albert Einstein said, whoever is careless with the truth in small matters cannot be trusted with important matters. Integrity and honesty, whether in big things or in small things, is an imperative for the role of leader. Both for us ordinary councillors working for the residents who trusted us enough to elect us, and certainly for our leader, who we must trust to guide us and to lead by example. And Vicky has certainly earned all our trust. Einstein also said, a person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new, and I shall not try to make you believe Vicky and this administration has not made any mistakes. But these have been made through an honest desire to improve the lives of the residents who put us here. We all have hopes for our towns and for the city region which we may become. We have hopes to make things better and our leader, Vicky, shares our hopes and shows us how we can achieve them. As one of my more poetic correspondents said, the Unity Alliance is a beacon, a collaborative rainbow working in a toxic political climate. Vicky has led us all by her example, has helped make possible the many achievements this council can celebrate. Chairman, I ask all councillors to support Vicky here tonight to continue her excellent work as the leader of BCP Council. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dedman. Uh, can I call on uh, Councillor Kieran Wilson, please, uh, to yeah. second the proposal? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, tonight we are here to elect the leader of the council, and I have had the, uh, the privilege of being asked to second a very familiar face in Councillor Vicky Slade. In preparing something to say tonight, I thought a lot about what leadership is and what it is in the context of leading the 12th largest uh, authority in the country during a pandemic. For me, the most important thing to do in a crisis is to communicate, and Vicky has done this exceptionally well. At the start of the pandemic, she took to Facebook Live, informing residents of what was happening, and has continually kept them up to date throughout this. But more than this, um, it is her honesty and that sometimes brutal honesty of what she says mm. that has been so, uh, so important and appreciated by residents. We have difficult times coming down the line as a country and a conurbation, and I believe we need a leader who won't sugarcoat those challenges, but faces them head on. However, great communication is nothing without being able to listen, and this is another area where she excels. She is the most contactable person I know and has time for anyone. She has the humility to accept when a mistake has been made and the ability to correct it. Her work ethic is second to none. She seems to have 32 hours in her day. Her knowledge of the council and all of its departments simply amazes me. She, she often makes light of the fact that she doesn't have a degree but she could easily have a PhD on how to run a council and write her own book on how to do it during a pandemic. In both votes of no confidence, the criticism was not aimed at the leader. In fact, I said during the first vote, it must be the only time in the history of politics 
where those trying to remove the leader had nothing negative to say about the leader. Vicky has been a shining example who has shown us how this council should work with an open, forward thinking and inclusive way of doing things. Vicky has a tremendous number of qualities, but the ones I have appreciated the most have been her empathy, understanding and support. In the last 18 months, I have had some of the best and worst moments of my life, both professionally and personally. To represent an area you were born in a subject you are passionate about is an honour that few get. But being in the cabinet is not easy. You are scrutinised intensely from a strong opposition, the public, but probably most harshly by yourself. And at times that has been a real challenge. But Vicky has always been a phone call away, able to say the right things at the right time, and has put her trust in me and allowed me to develop and grow into this role. And I will always be grateful for that. I've said this before to people, um, but my favourite brand, The Stone Roses, who coined the name after wanting to get the perfect balance of soft and hard. And I think that's what Vicky is. She cares so very deeply about every single resident, but she stands up to challenge and is ready to make important decisions for the betterment of the place we all love. So it is my pleasure to second Councillor Slade to be the leader of the council. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Uh, can I call upon uh, the nominee, please, Councillor Vicky Slade to uh, address the council? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you so much to Councillor Debman and Councillor Wilson for your um, nominations and seconding. I have to confess to being incredibly sad and frustrated that it's been necessary to hold this leadership vote less than two years after our formation, when the progress we've been making in delivering fantastic outcomes for the people of BCP has, has been good. And the council is undergoing such significant change and the residents are under so much stress, both in financial and health crisis. Leading this great organisation has been an enormous privilege and I don't take lightly the concerns that have been raised. I accept that as an administration, we underestimated the impact of some of the decisions that have been made. And as leader of that administration, I take full responsibility. I thought carefully about whether I was prepared to accept the nomination for tonight, bearing in mind the outcome of last week's vote. But I still believe that I have the right skills to unite the council. Integrity, honesty, respect, commitment and professionalism and the trust and confidence of our officers, residents, partners and businesses to continue the work that I've done to put BCP on the map as a progressive, innovative place and a council that means business. No one could have predicted a global pandemic, plus the impending cliff edge of Brexit and the impact that this has had on our residents, on our staff and on our finances. The postponement of some of our key projects like the Citizens' Assembly, delays to staffing our regeneration team and the extended time that's been taken to complete our corporate engagement, our community engagement strategy are incredibly disappointing, but they're absolutely necessary. Our ability to push on with the work that we are doing to eliminate hunger in this borough, um, the creation of the Together We Can Resilience Hub, the, the building of a brand new children's plan, the winning of funding for the Boscombe Town Fund and the Paul Heritage Plan, and just yesterday, the completion of the power station site, just over a year after we took the decision that we couldn't leave it in private hands to develop, show that we have delivered where it's mattered and where time has been of the essence. I've listened to the criticism that's been levelled at us and I've written to all councillors explaining my proposals going forward. The intention to focus the cabinet on our trusted, experienced members, committing to changing the democratic system to include all members and bringing forward plans to engage with our residents through the creation of community councils and changing the portfolio holders to skills where they have be most better suited and where perhaps mistakes have been made. And I believe, most importantly, that I've proved that I have the best interests of every person of Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul at heart. And that is why I'm asking every member of the council to support me. Thank you, Councillor Slade. Uh, I will um, uh, afford you the opportunity after members have uh, spoken later on um, to, to, to sum up. But I'm now going to move to uh, Councillor Philip Broadhead, please. Uh, proposer for Councillor Mellor. Councillor Broadhead. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'm delighted to propose Councillor Mellor this evening for the position as leader of our council. Uh, many others will, I'm sure, speak about Councillor Mellor's, Mellor's qualities and experience to take forward an inclusive administration for our area and his plan to reset, because it's clear to me, Mr. Chairman, that we do need a reset. We need to re-engage with our businesses, our communities and our councillors, because things have gone quite severely wrong. Uh, a few weeks ago, the leadership lost a vote of no confidence by a large margin, with none of the unaligned councillors voting for this administration to continue. Now, why is that? I firmly believe it's because they're fed up with being told by the leadership and this administration that they know best. This is an administration that unfortunately just hasn't listened. Over the last few weeks, I've spoken to business leader after business leader, uh, sector after sector, who almost unanimously have told me, quite unbelievably, that their relationships have completely broken down with the council because the administration fails to listen and because they know best. Only last week, actually, the acting leader of the administration wrote a Facebook plea to residents to essentially intimidate members of the unaligned for, in his view, voting the wrong way. Why? Because he knows best. And then finally, despite losing a vote of no confidence in her leadership only a few weeks ago, where only 33 of the 74 councillors supported her continuing, we have the former leader quite inexplicably back asking us to change our minds. Why? Because we got it wrong and she knows best. Uh, it's actually deeper than that because as Councillor Slade has just pointed out, she sent an email round to many members of this council tonight, not saying sorry, but actually blaming her defeat on her own team. And I'll quote her words, that the inexperience and approach of some members of the cabinet have let us down and that she takes responsibility for the mistakes and failures of the team. Not her fault, but somebody else's. Mr Chairman, we need to move on from the days of we know best to the days of listening and engaging. That's the reason why so many of the unaligned councillors now trust Councillor Mellor more, because he genuinely listens and will build an administration when no one is excluded because they vote the wrong way or have the wrong colour rosette. It's quite simple. If you put people at the heart of decision making, you might not always get it right, but you rarely get it wrong. Councillor Mellor has promised the governance review to make sure our council works properly back in March. He's put forward a 25-page document outlining suggested priorities, but they're only the starting blocks because we all have to go on this journey together. There's so much talent and experience in this council and will only be truly effective if we stop telling people what to do and start working with them. Uh, Councillor Mellor and others will tell you more about his vision for the council and beyond, but I can tell you one thing. It won't be all about him, it won't be a one-man show, and it will be an administration that will never, ever say we know best. That's, Mr Chairman, is why I'm delighted to propose Councillor Mellor to be our new leader tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Broadhead. Uh, I'd now like to call on uh, Councillor Jude Butt, who is uh, going to second Councillor Mellor. Councillor Thank Butt. you, Mr Chairman. Uh, yes, thank you. I'm delighted to second uh, Councillor Drew Mellor for the position of leader of BCP Council. Councillor Drew Mellor, we know he's a local government politician, as are both candidates. But what do we really know about him? What is outstanding about Drew's ability and achievements that makes him the right person for this complex role of leader of this enormous council? The skilled entrepreneur, child at home, a council house in Guildford, first of his generation to achieve a degree, oh, really? excelled as multi prize winning graduate, majored in and was quickly promoted in the corporate finance arena with Price Waterhouse Cooper. Now a very successful business owner, employing 200 staff, turnover of 20 million, and winning the prestigious Enhanced Growth Award for Dorset Business Awards only last year for outstanding growth. He's now sharing his huge knowledge of the industry through various non-executive directorships. The Public Spirit, funded, founded, and chairs the Mental Health Children's Charity Stormbreak, organizes and runs charity marathons, proud to serve as a school governor for over 10 years. The experienced councillor, past deputy leader of the Isle of Wight Council, borough of Poole cabinet member for transportation, living in his ward and dedicated to his residence in Talbot and Branksome Woods. The family man, married to Kate with two tiny children and cricket and rugby mad. With an established backdrop as a proven professional and grounded community leader, how will Drew deliver for BCP as its council leader? with decisiveness, enabling timely decisions to move along the turgid impasses that so often afflict glacial council decisions. 
with integrity, applying a set of strong shared values, making the right ethical choices together, ensuring the council maintains a strong positive image, building skilled teams, creating and maintaining a collaborative team of councillors working towards shared goals, problem solving, staying calm and identifying step-by-step -step solutions, ensuring our transformation projects are completed on time, in cost and on spec, stemming the flow of council taxpayers' money lost to so many failed projects. Trustworthy, delivering on agreed plans and keeping promises, creating a resilient, eclectic council of elected members who are able to work together for the benefit of all our residents. I've watched Drew develop over time into a politician who puts people first, not personalities. Drew is determined to use all skill sets of all elected members and engender real mutual respect, removing the pointless cockfighting that just gets in the way of good fiscally sound governance. Drew will create a sound base we can all rely on and work from. That's, Drew will uh, move us three from minutes, the UA-led panic of politicians Councilor lurching Councilor between constantly Councilor conflicting Councilor policies Councilor to Councilor providing Councilor deliverable fiscally Councilor sound Bart. governance. Good leadership Councilor is contagious. Bart. It inspires all to three take minutes. Part. Everybody else had three and a half minutes, Mr Chairman, because I timed them. No. Three and a half minutes. No. I am on to no. three, three and a half minutes. minutes. Three minutes. Three, three minutes. Three minutes is the rule. Catch Drew the is the up. person to take everyone going I forward together. Thank you, Mr. You Chairman. To turn what? your microphone off. I will turn my microphone off, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for curtailing what was uh, the truth about the whole matter. You three and a half minutes, minutes. Everybody else you had. had more than three minutes, Councillor Mutt. Mm. Thank you. I now call on uh, uh, Councillor Drew Meller, please, the nominee. Thank you, Chair. We're here tonight because the Unity Alliance, under Councillor Slade, has lost the confidence of this chamber. The Unity Alliance has also lost the confidence of our residents. To continue with more of the same is not listening, and we will not make this mistake. Do we hear from our residents? There is pride in our town centres. Our streets feel safe enough, or clean enough, that the economy is improving, or even important to this administration. The lives are improving. No, they say the exact opposite. In listening to this chamber, I was asked to come forward with what we would do, where our ideas and priorities are. Well, I encourage you to read our 25-page reset paper. That is what this council needs, a full reset. We need to prioritise our economy and jobs, and our school children, now more than ever, most particularly those disadvantaged. Bring back pride and a feeling of safety across our towns. Our first 100 days plan will actively address these issues and more. The how is as important as the what. How are we going to do this? A huge amount of good work was achieved by preceding authorities, alongside mistakes that were made, which need to be acknowledged, but we are not and will not be the poor administration of the past. We are not and will not be the Bournemouth administration of the past. The past is firmly behind us, and it is time to leave it there and talk about the future, of how great this council can be, and how members and residents alike can and should be at the very heart of it. What we aren't going to do is continue to tell councillors and residents what they should be thinking. We will bring forward an administration that genuinely seeks to work with all members of this chamber, including launching a governance review as a priority. And as a priority of mine, it will not be cancelled because it is too difficult. And we certainly won't tell members what the outcome of that review should be before it even starts. We can and we must encourage and utilise the skills of this chamber for the best impact we can bring to the lives of all our residents. And we will promote a skills matrix of all councillors to aid this. We will bring forward a truly open and member-led council. We will reduce SRAs for the leader and cabinet so that at no extra cost to this council, extra lead members from any party can be brought forward to lead areas they're specialist in and passionate about. You do not fix a cabinet of compromise by reducing the number of members from across the chamber you have involved. We will open up decision making with all members invited to member panels in every cabinet area so that members for the first time can shape policy together. We will bring a reset chair, an administration that 100% puts councillors of all parties and none at its heart 
and a council that puts our residents firmly at its heart. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Mayler. Uh, I will now op open it up to the floor. Members wishing to speak, would you please type in RTS in the sidebar? Uh, thank you. So the first one I have is Councillor Jane Kelly. Councillor Kelly, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Excuse me for the slight delay while I turned on everything. So uh, thank you for allowing me to speak first. An administration that puts councillors at its heart and a councillor that puts residents at the heart of it. How pleasing it was to hear Councillor Mellor speak those words. They are so important for we councillors to remember why we're here and what we stand for. Success for Councillor Mellor this evening will mean that this council will henceforward keep in contact with its residents and listen to what they say. Our councillors are elected to be in touch with their residents, communicating with them and bringing their views back to make sure that they're heard. Communities have the lived experience of the effects of our policies and we need to listen to them in order to shape those policies so that they have the most benefit possible. We know that not everyone will be happy with everything that happens in their part of the conurbation, but if people know that their opinion has been taken into consideration, that really helps to soften the blow. And sometimes, in time, change can prove not to be so difficult to accept after all. Something else for us to really work on, bringing the three towns of Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole together as one large cohesive community which can work in partnership, raising standards across the piece. We have to rise above partisanship. This is our borough now, and we need to identify with all the diverse and beautiful cultures and areas that we are blessed with here. Lastly, consultation after the event must never happen again. True consultation is done before implementation and is listened to. Choreographed petitions just don't cut it. We all want to hear from everyone and we will listen. As Councillor Mella has said, our residents will be at the heart of our council. We want to serve them in the best way possible and I know that he will strive to achieve that aim. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Uh, next uh, request to speak is from Councillor Cox. Councillor Mike Cox, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman, fellow councillors. We should start really by congratulating Councillor Mellor for winning the vote of no confidence motion uh, a few weeks ago. It is a political achievement to bring down a, a leader achieve, uh, supported by 60% of the electorate when you only have the backing of 28%. It is even more brave of him to cause her downfall when she is in, held in such high regard by so many independent commentators and the public. If Councillor Mellor wins tonight's vote, we should expect great things from him, from someone so successful and so brave. He certainly has a tough act to follow, but we should fear not. According to Councillor Mellor's CV, he is chairman of and runs a very successful engineering company. So successful, he manages to be chairman without being a director. A feat only achieved by Frank Sinatra when he was chairman of the board of a very dubious set of uh, characters from Las Vegas. And But according to the standard table A, Memorandum and Articles of Association, only a director can be an elected chair, but Councillor Mellor Mella doesn't worry about technicalities, does he? To promote himself as leader of the new BCP Council, we must take someone, it must take someone with special ability of communication and attention to detail. He can therefore ignore the fact that he presided over at least two companies which went bankrupt, owing HMRC hundreds of thousands of pounds. Uh, a fact hidden from most searches due to his name being changed from Andrew to Drew. Entirely coincidental, I am absolutely sure. We are asked to ignore the fact that his disclosures of pecuniary interests, a cornerstone of the Council's transparency arrangements for councillors, were riddled with inaccuracies and possible omissions. We should turn a blind eye, of course, to his inability to disclose his sponsors in the 2019 election, despite the fact that his running mates were managed to. No, this sort of attention to detail Councillor Mellor leaves to others, the plebs, the hoi polloi. 
He is, after all, far too busy running a very successful venture capital business, borrowing millions from the lender of last resort. He appears to be so busy, in fact, that he omits to pay his creditors. Two county court judgments registered against him in 2018 and 2019, one of them for £10,965, still not satisfied, bears testament to him playing fast and loose with other people's money. Councillor Miller is truly a magnificent example of casino capitalism at work in this country. I am absolutely sure, you know, with, with Councillor Judy Butt's uh, reassurance that we will be safe in his hands. Well, probably as safe as we would be in Donald Trump's hands at any rate. So may God help us and thank you for listening. Thank Mr. you, Chairman, Councillor Cox. Mr. Chairman, I have, uh, a right to, I have a right to come back. I've been named personally, but I will reserve my right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm being advised that you do not have the right, uh, Councillor Butt. I'll just, I'll just uh, pause the meeting for a moment to take further guidance. Thank you. With respect, Mr. Chairman, I was named personally, but I will be advised. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councillor Buck, can I just confirm that you wish to make a personal explanation? In no, I think I think, Mr. Chairman, actually, uh, in the interest of brevity, I was named. I will uh, not make any further comment. It was an outrageous statement, the whole speech, but I will leave it at that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butt. Uh, Councillor Tony Trent, please, next to, to speak. Councillor Trent. Councillor Trent. Councillor Trent is just sorting out his Isn't microphone. It? Councillor Trent, please. Oh. Hey, he is still just struggling with oh, his microphone. Yeah, One moment. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Okay, he's just struggling still. So if you want to move on to somebody else, then I come back to Councillor Trent. Thank you, Councillor Rice. Uh, Councillor Lisa Lewis, please. Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I really have to speak up um, for Vicky Slade. She has all the qualities that are required in a leader, such as wisdom, integrity, strength, good judgment, energy, charisma and compassion. She has great experience and is definitely someone I'd be willing to trust to lead the council through difficult and unprecedented times such as the pandemic. Vicky has already proved she's capable. She's taken on the newly formed BCP council and with the cabinet members has had many successful outcomes despite the, de despite the deplorable cuts to the local government funding from central government. When the pandemic and then lockdown occurred, she was totally in control and managed to cope with many surprise events which came our way. At the last meeting, some of the Conservatives did their best to criticise, referring to the onslaught of tourists, how the situation was handled, homeless people in Bournemouth town centre, the etros, etc. But they only showed themselves up for not knowing the full facts and I didn't hear any sensible alternative suggested. The irony was that it was down to our Conservative Prime Minister that we had so many visitors with so little time to prepare. And as for the homeless, I didn't recognise the town centre that was described. And actually, most homeless people are homeless due to the government's austerity policies and universal credit. Under Vicky's leadership, 
and Kieran Wilson as cabinet member. Over 300 have been moved to temporary accommodation and over 60 have been found permanent homes. When I was canvassing for the May 2019 election, I came across many, many residents who were fed up with local politics because in Bournemouth it had been just about the Conservatives and they didn't feel any connection. In a one party situation, debate can be stifled and there's a risk of poor decisions with not enough openness and transparency. People want more of a political balance on the council. And Vicky has shown herself to be a leader who knows exactly what is going on all over BCP and is never faced by questions when she does her online question and answer session. She constantly amazes me, she inspires confidence and she's way the best person to lead us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Uh, Councillor Trent, have you, uh, have you managed to sort your issues? Did you wish to address the council? Hopefully it works. Is it working? Yes, yes I can hear you loud and clear, Councillor Trent. Oh, thank you much for that. <laughs> these, uh, th these headphones were doing weird things. Right. Um, right, I'll start again. The one thing I won't be saying this evening is that I've agonised over the decision before us. The decision for me is clear and unequivocal. We should be supporting Vicky Slade as leader of BCP Council. Vicky has been doing a fantastic job under often challenging circumstances. Vicky has learned a lot from her experience and is prepared to adapt learning from her experiences. She has also been the most supportive leader I've ever experienced and I've been around a long time. A questioner earlier on said that councillors should learn to work together across the party and political divide. This is exactly what Vicky Slade has been doing these last almost 17 months. She has brought councillors from three different political parties, two party groups and a number of independents, including some who were lifelong conservatives, together in a single administration. Not only that, but this administration has seen through its first budget and taken difficult decisions, all without the rancour and division that infects so many political groupings. Contrast the last 17 months in BCP with the problems experienced in the same period in our national parliament under a majority rule of one political party. It is also worth noting that when the cabinet scrutiny system was first introduced in Paul, in the early noughties, the Lib Dem led no overall control administration in Paul, gave Conservative seats on the cabinet, four I seem to remember. It was a move I fully supported at the time, being a great believer in working cooperatively. Unfortunately, the Conservatives, rather than take their responsibility seriously, chose to use their places on cabinet as an additional platform from which to bash the administration. When I knocked doors back in the spring of 2019, I was surprised at the number of people who told me they were lifelong Conservatives, but were not going to vote Conservative locally, not based on the party's record in government, but out of disillusion at the way they were running our local towns. This wasn't just about the merger of the three towns. Many didn't even mention that. It was about the way they ran things. The word arrogance cropped up often. We're talking about many of those still in the chamber. I could highlight past misdemeanours like the secret deal initially made behind closed doors to merge the three towns without ever consulting on all available options. And there was no urgency to justify the way that was done. Instead, I want to pose some questions. Now that BCP Council has at long last secured the ownership of the Holes Bay Power Station site in Paul, who do you trust to secure the best development for the public good? A party that seems to bend over backwards to meet the needs of the big developers or a group of parties and individuals who are only there for one reason only and that's to get the best outcome for the wider public available within the financial restraints we are stuck with. Remember what the leader in waiting suggested the priorities were in Councillor Trent, uh, oh. that's three minutes. Thank you very much. That's OK, thank you. Can I call on uh, Councillor Sandra Moore, please? Councillor Moore. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, sorry, I couldn't find my mute button. Uh, to bring us all here for this extraordinary general meeting, 
two councillors have died, including my own colleague. So forgive me, but I am really feeling this tonight. And we're not allowed to hold any by-elections. And in these uh, COVID-19 days, the only way to change an administration is to go down this rather unpleasant route. And Vicky simply does not deserve to be treated like this. But despite that, she's agreed to stand again. And I want Vicky Slade to lead this council. A leader with integrity, copious energy, and a strong work ethic. A leader who leads from the front. A leader who will work with everyone and on behalf of everyone, irrespective of political party, how you vote, or indeed whether you vote at all. A leader who only wants the best outcomes for everyone living across Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul, and is not afraid of the work needed to achieve them. Vicky Slade has my full support because Vicky has the skills, the confidence, the determination and the sheer bottle to deliver the goods. Vicky Slade is my choice for leader and I ask you to give her your support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Uh, Councillor Beverly Dunlop, please. Councillor Dunlop. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, it's not in my nature to be horrible, so I'll uh, carry on as I intended. Um, most mornings, I take my dogs to walk on the beach. It never gets boring and I never take it for granted because my life hasn't always been like this. I was born in the butt end of Birmingham in the late 50s in a council house. And I know what it's like to live hand to mouth, no holidays, outside lav and frost on the inside of the windows in winter. So I'd like to say to Councillor Wilson that Councillor Slade isn't the only person that kind of cares about those at the bottom and cares about others. But I truthfully am very proud to be working class and I'm not the only one. Councillors Lawton, Councillor Kelsey, Councillor Mellor and others in our group, all born in council houses, all worked our way up from humble beginnings and worked hard, taking advantage of opportunities because that's what we working class do. But that's only possible when politicians have a mindset to create opportunities. That is surely the purpose of politicians, to enable, to stimulate, to trigger opportunities so that everyone can achieve like we have. And that is what ordinary people want so that they can determine their own destiny. What they don't want is politicians who know best, who are busy telling them how they must live their lives, what they should think, what they should value, what mode of transport they should use. Oh, and by the way, Christmas is cancelled. Because what we really need to do right now is frighten our residents and businesses even more and push our economy off the cliff. Now is the time to stimulate, enable, support and look for ways to ensure everybody has those opportunities, the ones I had, even in the middle of a pandemic. We councillors are not here to tell people what to do and the council should absolutely not be run by a tiny group of ideologues. There is some real talent in this council. There are people in the UA that we barely get to hear, our independents who have no less value and skills, all elected to serve. So let me say to everyone in this council, if you want to be heard, if you want the needs of your residents to be considered, even those of you in the not so sexy wards like me, if you want to be involved, consulted and have your residents at the heart of decision making, if you want your skills and experience recognised, then consider that Conservatives are the only group in this council that won't have to appease, compromise or pander to ideologues. If you want to be part of an administration that puts councillors at its heart in a council that puts residents front and centre, then now is your only opportunity to do so by voting for Councillor Bella as leader. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dunlop. Uh, Councillor Tony O'Neill, please. Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've listened tonight from councillors who are perhaps better left unnamed, but they will know who they are. However, I am very concerned about their ingrained, some might say intransigent or biased view of what being a Conservative is. 
I do not recognise that description, a one they seek to portray for old reasons. And interestingly, note when the government gives money, it's their win, and when it goes wrong, it's the government's fault. Well, management is about managing challenge. As someone who is proud to be a Conservative, and incidentally, I grew up in a council house in a staunch Labour family, I, like Drew Bella, worked my way up I confirm that I have structured companies to aid their survival. This, I might add, saved jobs, it secured employment and did lead to growth. This was not asset stripping or a lining of my own pockets. Those sadly affected were given one-to-one -one help and where appropriate counselling. I have personally sat down with many to help them write a successful CV and indeed I have liaised directly with those who might offer the opportunity of employment. I know the school of hard knocks. Why did I do this? I did it because I understand impacts. Impacts upon people, impacts upon families, impacts upon futures. I make no apology for being a Conservative. I look across this virtual room and I also see those that truly care about their constituents those that are not driven by their ego or by personal status or ambition, but by their true independence. There are members of the Alliance who have had the strength of character to have voiced their concerns, to stand up and be counted, despite in some cases they're being intimidated by one of their own. One of their own who has the temerity to talk about whipping. I repeat, intimidated. To my mind, at worst it's incitement and at best it's bullying. All those truly independent councillors I respect and I look forward to working with them and I hope that we do. And doing so within a leadership and a cabinet which I believe to be truly ambitious for our residents, not masters of sound bites and PR exercises, inclusive and encouraging, of stimulating open and challenging debate without threat or ridicule, not attempting to stifle that debate, of delivering an economy, an environment and residence in which we can all be proud. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, it would appear that um, I have no further speakers. So, uh, right, I now have uh, Councillor Paul Hilliard. Councillor Hilliard, please. Thank you, Chairman. I will be voting for Councillor Vicky Slade as leader. Being the leader of the new BCP Council, Council Councillor Slade's leadership has been widely celebrated by the public and councillors from all parties. Setting out an open, transparent and engaging approach has been accepted by our communities. The leader and cabinet have an open door policy. Many have used it. The leader and the cabinet hold public consultations and member presentations to shape policy before being formally agreed. Cabinet welcomes public and councillor questions. Cabinet is not a rubber stamp process. Active debate and free speech are welcome. The weekly leaders YouTube Q&A is inspirational. The regular leaders update emails are informative. Councillor Slade is a natural leader delivering for residents and businesses. Please, I urge you, do not ruin BCP's Council's positive direction and public standing. We do not need restarting. BCP is working for all under the leadership of Councillor Vicky Slade. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hilliard. Uh, Councillor Mark Howell, please. Councillor Howell. Um, I withdraw my request. I'm just interested in hearing a few more people speak. Thank you. I'll speak later. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Uh, Councillor Julie Bagwell, please. Councillor Bagwell. Uh, good, good evening, Chair. Um, Mr Chairman, we've heard much of this debate already a few weeks ago, and there is a danger we are going over old ground. Therefore, in the interest of moving it forward and pursuant to Procedure Rule 9 and Appendix 1 of the Part 4 Procedure Rules, I move that the question now be put and that we go straight to the vote. 
If I get a seconder, I understand from the monitoring officer that we then take a vote on this proposal and that if that is successful, we move directly to the vote on the main motion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bagwell. I'd like to second that, Chair. Chair, I'd like to second that, please, Councillor Butt. Uh, thank you, Councillor Butt. Uh, right, I think we now need to go to the vote. Uh, if members would just bear with me for one minute, please. Thank you, members. Uh, I did offer uh, both Councillor Miller and uh, Councillor Vicky Slade to, to speak uh, or to address the, the council once again. But what I will do is I will, I will go to the vote first of all, in terms of the, the, that the question now be put. And then, uh, and then I will ask uh, Councillor Miller and Councillor Slade to address the council uh, following the uh, the result of uh, this th this ballot in terms of that the question now be put. Members, I take on board Councillor Trent's <coughs> point that we only have two further speakers. So, uh, I'll be very grateful if members could turn their microphones off whilst they're not speaking. Thank you very much. Uh, can I call on uh, Karen Rampton, please, to address the council? Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'm sure that all members here tonight will agree that we have a collective responsibility, and that is to ensure the voices of our most vulnerable residents can be heard and listened to. I include our older residents in need of care, our young adults who are transitioning from children's services to adult social care, our residents with a learning disability, with physical disabilities, mental health issues, and of course, cannot forget those who care for them. Unfortunately, whether through inexperience or misjudgment, the Adult Health and Social Care Committee had meetings cancelled and items deserving of scrutiny were because of this delayed, now causing a very large backlog. And I include in that day centres and day opportunity provision, pathways to mental health provision, hearing the voices of our People First organisation, and of course, the way forward for the health and social care system. They're all vitally important. Adult health and social care will be at the heart of Drew Mellor's administration's vision and priorities, and part of our ambition to provide fair, equitable, world-class services so that our residents can be supported to lead the lives they wish to, re to lead. And can I just say, as a footnote, uh, Mr Chair, Councillor Mellor is not only my ward colleague, he's also my friend and he's my neighbour and I'm really very well aware of his many acts of kindness, compassion and generosity. He's a man of integrity, he's a natural leader, but he's a leader who brings people with him and I absolutely support the vote for Councillor Mellor to be leader of the council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rapton. I have one more uh, councillor to speak, 
uh, which is Councillor Margaret Phipps, and then uh, Chair, we will deal with the. Uh, take just... the vote on the motion. We haven't had the vote on the motion. Where's the vote on the motion? You said that it's recorded. We have no vote on the motion, and we're moving on to other speakers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was there before Councillor Rampton, so I think that it's only right that I should be allowed to speak. Uh, members, I've been advised. Have a motion, which, which, Mr. Chairman, members, which you want to members, you please, to vote upon. Members, please. I've been advised that I must deal with the motion. I apologise, Councillor Phipps. Okay, I have to deal you. with the motion first of all. I'm sorry. I understand. That's no problem. Thank you. Chair, we can't hear you. Sorry, members. I'm happy to put this motion to the vote. Uh, and I look upon uh, the chief, chief executive to carry out the vote. So the motion is that the question now be put. Chief executive, please. Apologies, Chairman. My... Uh video was playing up. Um, so, councillors, this is a, a motion to put the substantive motion to the vote. Uh, so, if you are in favour of the motion now being put, which would terminate further discussion apart from the two candidates that the chairman has uh, indicated, then please vote for. If you wish to continue the debate, then please vote against. So, uh, I'll read out each name. Councillor Hazel Allen. For. Councillor Lewis Allison. Against. Councillor Mark Anderson. For. Councillor Sarah Anderson. For. Councillor Marcus Andrews. Uh, against. Councillor Julie Bagwell. For. Councillor Steve Barron. Against. Councillor Stephen Bartlett. Against. Councillor John Beasley. For. Councillor Derek Borthwick. Against or for? Four. Sorry, Councillor Derek Borthwick. Four. Four. Okay. Councillor Philip Broadhead. Against. Against. Councillor Philip Broadhead. Four. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mike Brook. Sorry, Graham. Sorry, Graham. I think someone else is talking on the microphone. I heard someone else vote then and I, said against. I did hear another voice for sure. I'll wait until Councillor Broadhead came on before I counted his vote for the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mike Brook. Against. Councillor Nigel Brooks. For. Councillor David Brown. Against. Councillor Simon Bull. Against. Councillor Richard Burton. Against. Councillor Diane no, Butler. For. Councillor Daniel Butt. For. Councillor Judy Butt. For. Councillor Eddie Coop. For. Councillor Mike Cox. Against. Councillor Malcolm Davies. For. Councillor Norman Decent. Shutting off democracy. Sorry, Councillor Norman Decent. Could you repeat Four. your vote? Four. Four. Thank you. Councillor Leslie Dedman. Against. Councillor Brian Dion. Four. Councillor Bobby Dove. Four. Councillor Beverly Dunlop. Four. Councillor Millie Earl. Against. Councillor Jackie Edwards. Four. Councillor LJ Evans. Against. Councillor George Farquhar. Against. Councillor Dwayne Farr. Four. Councillor Lawrence Fear. Four. Councillor Anne Filer. Four. Councillor David Flagg. Against. Councillor Nick Geary. Against. Councillor Mike Green. Four. Councillor Nicola Green. Four. Councillor Andy Hadley. Against. So please be with me, members. Sean. 
Councillor Str Sorry, Councillor May Haynes. Four. Councillor Peter Hall. Four. Councillor Nigel Hedges. Four. Councillor Paul Hilliard. Against. Councillor Mark Howell. Against. Councillor Mohan Ainger. Four. Councillor Cheryl Johnson. Four. Councillor Toby Johnson. Against. Councillor Andy Jones. Four. Councillor Jane Kelly. Four. Councillor David Kelsey. Four. Councillor Bob Lawton. Four. Councillor Marilyn Lepedevin. Against. Councillor Lisa Lewis. Against. Councillor Rachel Maidment. Against. Councillor Chris Matthews. Against. Councillor Simon McCormack. Against, and I'd like my vote recorded, please. Okay. Councillor Drew Meller. Four. Councillor Pete Miles. Against. Councillor Sandra Moore. Against. Councillor Lisa Northover. Against. Councillor Tony O'Neill. Four. Councillor Susan Phillips. Four. Councillor Margaret Phipps. Against. Councillor Karen Rampton. Four. Councillor uh, Councillor Felicity Rice. Against. Councillor Chris Rigby. Against. And I'd also like my vote recorded, please. Councillor Mark Robson. Against. Councillor Roberto Rocco. Four. Councillor Vicky Slade. Against. Councillor Anne Stribley. Four. Councillor Tony Trent. Against. Councillor Mike White. Four. Councillor Lawrence Williams. Four. Councillor Kieran Wilson. Against. Thank you, councillors. I will hand the vote uh, to the chairman. Thank you. Members, I have the result of the, uh, the, the ballot in terms of uh, the motion that the question now be put. Uh, those for 40, uh, those against 34. So the motion is carried. Now, before we, we move to the uh, vote uh, uh, for the leader, the position of leader, I did offer the opportunity for Councillor Meller and Councillor Slade to address the, uh, the, the council uh, before we went to the vote. And uh, I'm now going to ask uh, Councillor Meller if he wishes to uh, address the council, please. And then I will ask Councillor Slade. Uh, again, we're looking at three minutes for, for your uh, summing up. Councillor Meller, please. Chair, thank you. And you'll be pleased to hear I don't intend to use the, the, the full three minutes to sum up. How interesting that debate was. Um, when, when we're called the nasty Tories, well, have a look at this alliance uh, and, and your gutter politics. You can see why so many people are leaving you or considering it. And if you're not, if you are considering it, you know your continuing alliance puts you next to you know that man who spoke earlier on. Um, I'll, I really enjoyed um, Councillor Deadman's uh, speech in terms of when she said a person never made a mistake, never tried anything, uh, quoting Einstein. And I'll challenge anybody. Um, to find a successful entrepreneur who hasn't made a mistake. Uh, I'd also like the, the other quote reference to the chairman of the board. Um, one other thing the chairman of the board said was, I did it my way. And I just like to reiterate that I'm very proud of my journey and mine and my wife's success to, to date. Let's reset this debate. That's what I want to say. Let's be better than this. Residents deserve better than this. My pledge is honest and true. And I reiterate it here. I will bring forward an administration with members at its heart and a council with residents at its heart. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Meller. Uh, Councillor Slade, please. Thank, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I have found it quite difficult to hear, first of all, from the proposer um, of Councillor Meller that we wouldn't be hearing about Drew. Um, and then, uh, because we, it wasn't about a leader, it was about a team. Uh, and then 
to hear all about how he came from a council house, uh, which I didn't find particularly relevant because there are so many people who come from a council house, but we heard nothing about the failure to deliver housing, uh, and yet we've delivered affordable housing and we've committed to deliver so many more. Um, I've heard all about him being a parent and a school governor, which is a given for a lot of us. Indeed, I can add four children, a school governor, run a youth club, but it's actually irrelevant. What's relevant is that we've protected our children's centres and we've protected our youth centres and we've developed a children's plan. I've heard all about the champion of charity. I too have worked for a charity. I too have done my bit for the community. But what's most important is what we've done as a council for the vulnerable and for, for those people who need our charity. I could go on and on about the ice on my windows in my, in my childhood, but I won't because this isn't about our background. This is about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Just over a year ago, all bar one of the councillors of this council made a commitment to our corporate strategy. Every single member was involved in developing that strategy to brighter futures, to co co uh, connected communities, fulfilled lives, a sustainable environment, a dynamic region. Why? If they were committed to that, did they then decide a few months later, rather than supporting what we've all agreed to do, to bring forward a brand new reset in the middle of a pandemic, which suggested that perhaps they'd spent their time in lockdown rewriting the rules rather than working together to deliver what we'd all agreed to do? Why, if they didn't support the corporate strategy, did they not vote against it? And why, if they didn't support our proposals, did they not vote against our budget? We have been working together for 18 months in the most difficult of times and we should carry on with the course that we have set. Changing now for somebody who unfortunately has questions now that need to be asked, that's a decision for you. But I know that every single day of the last 17 months has been dedicated to making the lives better of people here. It's not about me, it's about our hard-working officers and members have a role to play in setting that strategic direction. But actually, it's our officers, the professionals, who we have employed to actually be our social workers, be our town planners, empty our bins, run our beaches, and do everything that makes this place great. They are the ones that are day-to-day -day running this council, and we should be leading them together in a strategic direction, and not demanding you, that this is led by Slade. us. Thank you, Councillor Slade. Uh, can I advise those watching the live stream that this process does not form part of the meeting open to the public and therefore a holding screen will be used during the secret ballot. Once the ballot has concluded, we will resume the live stream and the chief executive will announce the outcome of the secret ballot.
Uh, members, uh, we have a result and could I call upon the Chief Executive please to uh, uh, advise us of the result. Chief Executive. Thank you, Chairman. There are 74 councillors uh, on the uh, meeting tonight. Uh, there was one abstention, 40 votes were cast in favour of Councillor Drew Meller and 33 votes in favour of Councillor Vicky Slade. Therefore, Councillor Drew Meller has been elected leader of BCP Council. Thank you, Chief Executive. Uh, can I call upon uh, Councillor Meller, please, to uh, address the Council? Councillor Meller. Thank you very much, Chair, and, and thank you very much, members, for your support. Um, please can I give my um, assurance that I recognise the responsibility entrusted to me, and I will always do my best to act in the um, interest of residents, all of BCP. I undertake to lead a council which is collaborative, accountable and fair. Collaborative in a way in which we value the voices and opinions of those who will work with us, accountable to our residents and partners, and fair to those for whom we serve. It is customary at this point to set out my vision and programme for the administration and the membership and portfolios for Cabinet. I am surrounded by such a wealth of experience and talent across this chamber that this would not only be challenging but also an enjoyable exercise. However, rather than do this immediately, I want to ensure that we have explored every opportunity and set the tone of how I intend to leave this council. It would be the reasonable expectation of any resident in normal times that their council is delivering high quality public services, that they feel safe in their local neighbourhood, that vulnerable people are supported, that the beaches are clean, that their town centres and, and are destinations they wish to visit. However, these are not normal times. And while many of these things have become even more important to our residents, it is very clear that their expectations have in many cases not been met. An inability to make decisions has hampered the previous administration's capacity to act in an agile, decisive and timely manner. manner. It was decision-making at the lowest common denominator at times at the pace of the slowest and it squandered some of the opportunities which came its way. A seven party coalition was an inviting concept, but not an effective way to run a council. Having said that, the principle of collective decision making is well established and has many advantages, internal challenge, inclusivity and likely to pass the common sense test. Once it became clear that the Unity Alliance could no longer command the support of this council, the Conservative group set out to explore the options for establishing a secure and stable administration which will last until 2023. One which would give our residents a commitment to the plans will be delivered and clarity about the sense of direction. National government look for stability when choosing to invest and our towns, high streets and infrastructure need this now more than ever. As Councillor Slade noted only yesterday, many councillors have felt excluded from the decision making of the administration she led. In contrast, Recognising the wide range of skills and experience they have, it is my intention to bring as many councillors on board as possible, beginning by talking to those from other political groups and seeking also the input of those who have no party affili political affiliation. To that end, as the next largest party, we spoke first with the Liberal Democrats, knowing that in many cases our plans for local government are not so widely divergent, but were met with a flat no. Sadly, the principal driver appeared to be their fear of losing out at the ballot pots at the next elections, while disappointingly and transparently not in the interests of residents, that answer appears to be final. We've also spoken with the Christchurch Independents, and while their response has, been, has not been warm, I would like to take this opportunity to make an appeal to them. We respect the position you took, protecting the interests of your residents. You campaigned on principle and you were successful. You have represented your residents and you have succeeded in what you set out to do. Let me say this very clearly. We get it. We have listened to what you said. So what now for Christchurch and what now for Christchurch independence? What is it that you seek for your residents and what is in their best interest? Is it complaining from the sidelines? Is it repeatedly fighting battles which you've already won? Becoming a bore in the corner of the pub, endlessly going over past triumphs which become mistier with time? To be clear, is it taking, refusing to take yes for an answer? Or is it working with a partner who you clearly have much in common with? Is it having the opportunity to make a difference to your residents? Is it building the leadership shown by Councillor Phipps on development of the local plan, whose impact will be felt everywhere across BCP and resonate very deeply in Christchurch? Chairman, I will set out my vision for this administration in due course, and I will discuss this with the Chief Executive at the first opportunity. 
but I would like, like to make a clear and open offer to the Christchurch Independents to take the weekend to talk with us about how we can come together in the best interest of all those whose trust we ask in seeking election. Our offer is no more and no less than the one you agreed in joining the former Unity Alliance. Please come and talk to us. In closing, Chairman, I look forward to bringing forward details of my Cabinet and other appointments to members of the Council in the very near future and to working with anyone who would join us to deliver what the residents of BCP deserve. We want to preserve our outstanding natural environment and protect our ancient, medieval and more modern history while embracing 21st century future. We want to celebrate our towns, villages, high streets, harbours, piers, beaches, parks and gardens, providing high quality education, work and leisure facilities, all the while showing compassion to those who need our help. In closing, from Hamworthy to Highcliffe, Broadstone to Burton, from Westbourne to West Howe, our purpose is to make your area the place where people want to be, where young people thrive, where businesses prosper, where those in work flourish, where there is help for those who need it, and where the elderly are valued, where residents and visitors of all ages feel safe. We're living in wholly unprecedented times and worrying times, Chairman, and it is our job to give some certainty, confidence and optimism to our communities, and I look forward to bringing this to you very soon. Thank you, Council, for their support. Oh, thank you, thank you, Councillor Mellor, and uh, may I offer my uh, congratulations on your election this evening. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members, moving on, uh, agenda item five: questions from councillors. There are no questions have been received, uh, which then this now concludes the business for this evening, and uh, I shall now formally close the meeting. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you.